races instead of two, which is uh, what has happened at every other round. Uh, but we are here and uh, the uh, championship reaching its conclusion with uh, four for the title. Lando Norris, Max Deferni, Dorian Boccalacci, formula of... Uh, uh, former of uh, Formula 3, of course, and Yihan Daruvala as well. They're all in contention for the 2016 Formula Renault 2-litre Northern European Cup ch uh, Championship title. However, uh, Lando Norris last weekend at Spa won the Formula Renault 2-litre Euro Cup title, which therefore must mean that he should come here brimming with confidence and having boshed the car on uh, pole position for Joseph Kaufman Racing. He must be in a very, very good position. Alongside me, former single-seater star and now top GT racer, is uh, Alex Torrell. And, you know, when you've won a competition like that and you come into another championship that you're racing in as well, it really must help your confidence, doesn't it? Yeah, good afternoon, Dave. Of course, it's a really, really big point. So as soon as you win a championship and you come to uh, a next race, you are full of confidence, you know, you did a good job. And even a championship like the Euro Cup, which is a really important championship, mm -hmm. you just know you, you did your your homework right and then you come to the next one and, and you keep, uh, you keep you try to keep the flow. These cars are Tatius chassis, single-seaters then, and uh, the Renault Sport engine producing some 210 brake horsepower. Uh, they are a uh, phenomenal single-seater racing car, and it's a, a, a big grid of cars. And Lando Norris goes into this on 265 points. Max Dufourney is on 217, with Dorian Boccalacci perhaps with an outside chance on 203, and that's also the case for Jan Du Daruvala as well also on uh, 203 points. However, uh, Lando Norris, uh, P1 on the grid, uh, whereas uh, Max Defourney is down there P5. And just as we mentioned Max, uh, we see his car there. So driving for the RS uh, GP team, he's got work to do, hasn't he? Because, you know, he needs to be ahead of Lando Norris, come what may, Lando Norris pole position. Um, you know, he, um, he's given himself a big task over the three races here at Hockenheim, I would suggest. We've had mixed weather conditions here at uh, Hockenheim. All the cars, as you can see, are on the slick weather tyres, as Alex Gilden, the Mark Burdett motorsport uh, racer, who goes from uh, P6. He's currently uh, P7 in the uh, points championship. Uh, yeah, the uh, weather conditions have been uh, just a little bit changeable here, and uh, we have had some rain, but the track is... Uh, Pretty dry now, unless Alex Torrell, you went offline, I suppose, and if you went offline or went off onto the Astro or the grass, then it would, would still be very, very damp. Yes, you are completely right, Dave. <clears throat> this has been a today a really uh, strange day with some uh, wet and dry moments. And now I think the track is completely dry, as we see also every driver uh, with slick tires on his cars. But as soon as you drive off the track, as soon as we go into those runoff areas uh, with AstroTurf and with this, for the people, this AstroTurf is like the grass, this artificial grass. Yes. This is completely damp and wet. So you have to be really cautious not to drive off because you have a lot of chances of spinning and or losing control of the car. So uh, we look there at uh, the uh, car of uh, Bartanian, who drives car number 30. There's uh, Korniv, who, um, Alexei, uh, who drives for the uh, JT Motorsport team, who is uh, down there on grid. And uh, there, as we go into the uh, cockpit of the car, you can see him there. From a P9. Dorian Boccalacci. You've raced against Dorian Boccalacci once or twice, haven't you, in your Formula 3 career, or was Dorian in the year after you? Yeah, it, Sorry. Was, it just came as so I was racing 2014, I think he was racing last year in Formula 3. So Beg your pardon. Yeah, no, no worries. So Dorian Boccalacci then on the grid. And there, a little bit of camera art from our cameraman down there is now this young man, Robert Schwartzman, who was in the ADAC Formula 4 series last year, ran a dual campaign in the German and the Italian series. An incredible young talent, in my opinion. Uh, Schwartzman is P5 in the championship, and he is tiny. I mean, four foot nothing. Um, when he's been on the podium in the past, and he may well be on the podium today, 
it's absolutely extraordinary. It's like you need another step so that he becomes the same, you know, really, really tiny fella. Extraordinarily talented, in my opinion, Robert Schwartzman. He'll be one to watch, certainly, uh, from his grid position. Keep your eyes out for uh, car number three. As uh, so we continue to go through the grid, there's uh, Falcaro there, another one of the RSGP uh, drivers, Julian. Um, he's going from uh, P13 on the grid. And uh, behind him is uh, Gabriel Aubry, another uh, Tech 1 racing driver, French driver. And there is uh, Aubry's car then, driving for uh, Tech 1 racing. That uh, purple and white livery uh, across his uh, car. So the competition this year has uh, taken us to Monza, Silverstone, Budapest, Spa, Francorchamps, also Assen, uh, Nürburgring, and uh, now the uh, grand finale of the three races here at Hockenheim as the cars are fired up, ready to go. It's a very, very short race, just 25 minutes of this uh, Hockenheim circuit, which something that you uh, said to me off the air earlier on uh, is the fact that this uh, Hockenheim circuit really is designed and uh, it promotes good overtaking. There are, there are places where you can do that, aren't there? Yeah, it's a, it's a good race track, especially down to the, to the hairpin corner four. You can have a really good chance to, to overtake and pass cars. So if you are back in the grid, it's a, it's a circuit where you can really make up some positions like we've seen in other categories already today. Yes, there's been lots of racing here already today, lots of rubber down there on the uh, track. Uh, these cars all race on the uh, Michelin tyres, and uh, they are really a phenomenal single-seater, the uh, Formula Renault 2-litre Northern European Cup. Cars away then on their formation lap, lots of revs and lots of wheel spinners, they uh, get away. It's a big, big grid of cars for this 25-minute uh, race around the Hockenheim circuit, the first of uh, three races for the Formula Renault 2-litre Northern European uh, Cup this weekend, rounding out their uh, 2016 season. So Lando Norris then on 265 points, the young UK superstar with uh, Max Defourney, 217. And there the grid for you. Bartolomei... Marecki, there's Max Defourney, Alex Gill sharing uh, row three. So Max Defourney got to go forward from there. Bruno Baptista and Alex Vartanian uh, going from row four. Alexei Kunev and Dorian Bokalacci, P9 and P10. Then it's Robert Schwartzman, one to keep an eye on, in my opinion. Hugo de Sadala, uh, Julian Falcaro and uh, Gabriel Aubry then are on uh, row seven with Will Palmer and uh, Yihan Daruvala with... Uh, Enrique Chavez and uh, Finlay Hutchinson, uh, Nerze Isakian and Lawrence Hoare. Thanks for your help with the uh, pronunciations here, mate. Uh, Philippe Hazybrook <laughs> and Julia Pankovic. There you go, I got through that, didn't I? Yeah, yeah you, you managed pretty well. <laughs> OK, uh, well, you can see the cars now. Um, <laughs> heading down into... Uh, they begin to uh, slow up. Uh, air temperature 18.4 degrees, uh, track temperature a uh, mere 17.8. It's really fascinating when you look at that particular part of the track, which of course forms part of the drag strip here at Hockenheim. Not too many people realize that there is a drag strip here for drag racing as well. So I've, never, I've never had a blast in that on that, have you? No, I've, I've never done any, any drag races. But I can tell you honestly, it's uh, that drag rubber, even well, if it's dry, it's not a problem, but when it's wet, it causes a lot of problems. Really? You can tell yeah. the difference? Yeah, it's like driving on ice. <laughs> OK. Well, thankfully, that shouldn't be, uh, that shouldn't be uh, too much of an issue uh, for this uh, race as the uh, cars then uh, make the way around the uh, final turn here. And uh, head towards the uh, grid. Their formation lap complete. Final, uh, final race on the uh, schedule for today. I think will be interesting start because as we can see the left row. Yes. Which is the second, fourth, sixth position, and so on. It's still a little bit dumb. So for now, the drivers uh, starting P2, P4, P6, and everything, they will they will struggle to get away a little bit because it's a little bit dumb, and they will they may lose some traction. So Fenestras, Fenestras, and all those behind might uh, struggle. 
let's let's see how they manage to to get away with a with a little bit dumb track we await the marshal there to wave the green flag at the back of the uh, grid. Once all the cars are into their uh, grid positions, which they are now, we get the green flag then, and that means that the race sequence can start. Formula Renault 2-litre uh, Northern European Cup then is go. And it was a good start from uh, the uh, P2 driver. Fenestras against uh, Lando Norris and Fenestras has got the better of him going into the next sequence of turns here. So they all break as they go into uh, turn two. The rest of the cars coming through. One runs off wide, two, three, four. A little bit of contact there and two cars spun around in the wrong direction. And uh, one of those is the um, Darabala car. And also one of the title contenders. So, yes, uh, from P4 in the points, but... So as they head into the hairpin, which is another one of the uh, pinch points, we're just waiting to see if... The, oh, and there's more uh, carnage there. And a safety car has been deployed. Well, if there was any doubt about the safety car being deployed, I would have been surprised by that because the cars were out there, weren't they, on uh, turn two? And uh, uh, there you can see that the uh, cars out. Gabriel Albury, one of those... Daruvala, another one as well, as they're having a conversation there about who did what, where and when and why it happened, which is... Well, can we pick the pieces out of it here? Uh, I would guess Daruvala was too much in the east and which is inside, which is still a little bit dumb, maybe locked up and, and couldn't turn around the corner. Right. Well, well, it's, it's hard to judge, honestly. Well... Maybe we get another... Uh, they all And even had a little bit of contact also in the front. It's a problem when when you have a track like this, which is only uh, you have only one one place which is dry, and the rest is damp. Well, one thing for sure that has uh, put pay to Daravala's chances of the uh, championship. That's for sure. It was an outside chance anyway, uh, because he was uh, P4 in the championship on 203 points, whereas Lando Norris up there on uh, 265. But uh, he's non-finish. Uh, certainly not going to help him at all. Ironically, the uh, Sasha Fenestras that's uh, leading the race uh, prior to the uh, safety car is uh, down there P6 in the points, so wasn't even in contention for the title. So Lando Norris probably is, you know, using his head a bit here and thinking, well, I'm not going to, you know, on the opening lap, certainly I'm not going to try too hard to get past Fenestras because, you know, there's nothing to be gained necessarily by it. Whilst I accept if you're a racing driver, you want to win every race you're in. And there, that was a uh, that was the uh, situation at the hairpin, which also included uh, uh, Alexei Kornev there for uh, JD Motorsport. So the safety car is uh, taking the cars around. The clock continues to count down there. You can see the order on the screen at the bottom there with Lando Norris uh, P2. Now, forgive me for saying so, but I did say Robert Schwartzman is one to watch. He's up to P5, having made uh, great progress. And uh, I do think he is a real young talent. And uh, if I'm honest with you, I'm perhaps a bit surprised that he's not uh, fared even better in the uh, Formula Renault 2-litre Northern European Cup than he has. Be interested to see where he goes uh, next year as he continues his uh, single-seater uh, racing path. So the car's being recovered then, and once the cars are recovered, we will go back to racing, and it will be an even shorter sprint race, that's for sure. Uh, so, P3 then is the man that's P2 in the championship, Max DeForney. As we see the uh, returning number 27 car there of uh, Alex Gill, who's trying to catch up with the back of the uh, crocodile, so called as the cars all weave behind the uh, safety car. And where that ever came from, crocodile. That expression, have you heard that before? No, oh, honestly, okay. I've never heard <laughs> so it before. But probably because I've been with a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, OK, on. maybe so. Yeah, you've always been racing, haven't you? Uh, yes, so um, he'll be trying to uh, catch up to the back of the pack. Cars all being led around by the uh, safety car. So uh, Max DeForney will be uh, hoping for good things uh, from uh, P3. Robert Schwartzman then another one to watch from uh, P5 for sure. And uh, there we can see the uh, number 10 car of uh, Hugo de Sadalea, the uh, Tech 1 racing driver.
So perhaps thinking that this might be the last lap behind the safety car because the recovery uh, process appeared to be uh, going pretty well. Uh, there you can see the uh, car of uh, Daravala. That is not the uh, racing driver. That's a helpful marshal who's uh, steering the car off. So Daruvala then for Josef Kaufmann racing out of the race. And absolutely zero points then uh, for him. And there you can see the uh, drivers looking uh, pretty, pretty unhappy up against the catch fencing, not even completed one racing lap. It's been such a frustrating feeling. And behind the safety car, we Some have a fun. spinner. Now that surely must be ultimately embarrassing for Hazebrook. Felipe having uh, turned the car around whilst behind the safety car. So he will now go right to the very back of the grid. Right to the very back of the uh, safety car. We're now beginning to see... Some oh, tips. great. This is all we need, isn't it? Just for the rain to come now. Ah, oh, it's been like this a bit all day, hasn't it? Where there have been some heavy, heavy showers. And sure enough, we get a red flag. So... The cars will be taken back to the uh, start-finish straight where they will be lined up one by one in the race line. order. They should line one by one in the race order and mechanics will come up, change tires and then race should be restart. Okay, well, dramatic if nothing else. Um, so... The rain has come just at the wrong time, to be honest. It doesn't look like it's raining that much. No, it much. doesn't. We are from the community. No, it doesn't. Cabin, it doesn't look that like before. We had a, we had a race and that was a lot more. And all of a sudden, in less than two minutes, the track was completely wet. OK, all cars to grid boxes. Wet race is the message we get on our uh, timing screen. And there, the teams then prepare the uh, wet weather tyres on the trolleys and get ready down there to do a uh, quick fit job on them. Um, well, there is a uh, very, very tight schedule here in terms of racing and also uh, time curfew. So the clock is continuing to count down even though we have the uh, red flag situation as the uh, Fenestras car, which is the race leading car ahead of uh, Lando Norris in uh, P2, makes its way back to the grid box. And it's interesting the point that um, we were making there that the cars will all line up one by one, but it is actually saying, and it's the first time I've seen this, actually on the message screen, Alex Turrell, cars to grid boxes. Yeah, that can be a difference between championship, but the rule, as I know, is you should uh, line up from, from Formula 3, you should not line up one behind the other one, because then come up a problem that you don't go, you, the driver doesn't go right to his uh, boxes, and then you need to uh, change again everything and move cars to, to the real position. Right. Okay. So the grid boxes then, presumably, are grid boxes in race order now? Yes, of course. Um, uh, grid boxes are uh, pretty uh, prevalent at the moment, given that, uh, you know, just last weekend at the Hungara Ring Racing Circuit for DTM, Robert Wickens, hugely experienced driver, ended up being put to the back of the grid because he went to the wrong grid box after the formation lap. Now, if a driver as experienced as Robert can make a mistake like that, presumably any driver can make a mistake. And uh, that's the point you're making, isn't it? You know, if you've, you've, yeah. you, you line up in the wrong grid box here... Well, wet race is uh, being displayed by the uh, race official there with the uh, board. And the uh, team's really rushing then to make the uh, changes to the tyres. Now, we're in this situation, uh, and Alex Torrell, you're an experienced racing driver. Here am I, but nothing other than a voice. The rain is coming down a bit now, but it has only been showers thus far today. Will any of those drivers have the ability to convince their teams to say, do you know what? the track is going to dry out, let's stay on slicks. I mean, the chances of that happening in the space of 15 minutes is remote, I know. But, you know, if you're, you know, P16, 17, 18, would it be worth taking the gamble if the, if the rain is not going to amount to very much? Yeah, the problems uh, we have now, Dave, I uh, just saw 10 minutes board, so 
we will have a five minute a five minute uh, race. And this is a problem with a slightly damped track for five laps uh, for five minutes, which is three laps. Then yes. you go on wets, and if you destroy the tires, then you just put a new ones for the next race. Doesn't matter. Does Doesn't it? really matter. If no. we would have have a longer race of thirty minutes, maybe then it, we have to take into account to to try another set of tires or go with slicks as the track will dry out. But yeah, now we can see here in the image with the contrast that it's raining quite a lot. Yeah. But like I said, I think we will get a five-minute race. Okay. Well, certainly the clock is uh, continuing to count down. The teams are working very, very fast there. And is that a bent arm at the back there? You can actually see how bent that is. Yes. Following You're contact. Right. Um, the engineer doing his best there with uh, bare hands to try and uh, straighten it a bit. And it always interests me that when you look at a, it's a great image, this is, because the rear of the car, it runs quite significant negative camber, where the, the wheel, the bottom of the wheel is splayed out a little bit further than the top of the wheel. Yes, this is a typical race setup. We usually drive uh, some more negative camber, uh, and it depends actually different of the cars. Some cars drive a lot more negative camber than the other ones, and also because when the, the car is well. in the air, the suspension just ah uh, uh, yeah free, it's going down. So also when the car goes into the into the floor, the suspension goes up, and then that changes as well the camber. So it's everything has to take into account. Oh, okay, okay. Interesting. Well, the uh, wet weather tyres have gone on to the uh, Fenestraz car straight away. Team doing a great job there, and the uh, car released from the rear jack and now from the front one as well. And uh, the rest of the teams are working hard there, presumably uh, with the sooner that they can do that, the sooner we can go back to racing. Uh, did you say you'd seen a 10-minute board? I didn't see that. Just, just as they head to the, right. to the grid, I could see here from, from the window they were showing 10 minutes board. That was minute 16. Here's some drivers going out of the car. Yeah, now that's is that. That's uh, maybe it's the, they check the suspension and they, they told him because to of that bent yeah. arm. Okay. Fair point, fair point there. The uh, spectators then that have enjoyed a uh, rich vein of uh, racing during the course of the uh, day here today at uh, Hockenheim. And then you're right, the rain is really coming down now, isn't it? Uh, where once it was uh, just showering, now it is uh, properly raining. So. Understandably, the uh, wet weather tyres going on. The race director uh, having chosen to stop the race to allow the teams out to uh, change those tyres very sensibly indeed. So uh, the wet weather tyres on the groove pattern and what the grooves do is dissipate the water, of course, from the surface of the track. And um, what you do find, though, during wet weather racing is that once the uh, track does begin to dry out, and this is really interesting because uh, you have to do this, is you then have to, before uh, you perhaps change back to slick tyres or maybe even intermediate, depending on what series that you're racing in, uh, to keep these tyres within their operating range, you have to keep them cool, don't you? So sometimes when the track is really drying out, is that why we see from racing drivers such as yourself really extraordinary lines being taken around the circuit because you're searching out for the water? Yes, completely. that's completely true. When the, when the wet tyre gets too hot, I mean, it's a tyre which is used to work on hot conditions, so when you reach to have a nice temperature on the wet tyres, it works really, really good. Yes. But when it goes over this peak of uh, temperature, then it, does, it starts to drop and start you start to have some degradation. That's why with the driver, when it starts to dry out the track, we need to look for the wet uh, patches to, to cool this, to, to, to take this temperature out of the tyre. Right. And, you know, other racing drivers that I've spoken to, and we've seen it in other categories that have been racing today, that if you're on the track on a slick tyre instead of a wet weather tyre, you know, it is like driving on eggshells, isn't it? You know, it, it's, it's, you know, as a, as a road to drive on myself, Alex, it's ice, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's like if you are with a completely slick tyre in an in a even damp or wet track, it's, it's, the car is impossible to drive. You will need to drive maybe 30, 30 k an hour, so you can, you can really stay on the track because it's like you said, it's like driving on ice. You have no grip at all. Well, the teams have done a good job there. And uh, most of the cars now fitted with the uh, wet weather tyres as the rain continues to fall here at uh, Hockenheim and the clock continues to tick down. It was a 25 minute duration race. And uh, as you can see from the clock at the top of your screen, we're already into uh, just 10 and a half minutes remaining. And uh, we're not, uh, we have not started to race yet. The cars will 
once we do start racing once again, of course, it'll be behind the safety car initially. And when the uh, safety car restart in a uh, wet race, three minutes? Three minutes more right now. When is the safety car restart, wet race? Race steward can decide whether to leave the safety car out for one lap or two laps, I'm giving yes. you understand. Completely, it is completely true as well. So yeah, depend on the, on how wet is the track. The race director can can sometimes says, okay, we do two laps behind the safety car, so the drivers have the chance to recognize well the track situation and and adapt themselves better to to the new uh, tarmac situation. Right. And when, yeah, like today, where we've had conditions where it has rained, um, presumably the amount of rubber that's gone down from other racing categories is less than if it had been completely dry and this was the first rain that we'd seen. Yes, of course. Now, the, the, we, we've seen that the truck is not really rubber down, it's pretty much clean. Mm -hmm. And this also not sometimes not so bad because the driver in the wet plays always uh, uh, not a good not a good role because uh, actually a car on, 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 a, on a clean tarmac in the wet, it has more grip than on a, on a tarmac with rubber. The rubber is kind of, let's say, a little bit of uh, soap, okay. which makes the track a little bit uh, even more... Uh, a little bit more, uh, yes, make, make this car slide a little bit more. We're looking at the uh, Lando Norris car then. So last weekend at uh, Spa, which of course is renowned for its uh, weather conditions, Spa Francorchamps circuit, uh, not so far away from here at uh, Hockenheim in uh, Belgium. Uh, that's where he sealed the uh, Formula Renault two litre Euro Cup championship last weekend. He's in a very strong position to seal the uh, Formula Renault 2 litre Northern European Cup this weekend. Uh, going into this race, 285 points to 217. That was a real whale tail, wasn't it, from the uh, Fenestras car then as he lit the back up and uh, drove that beautifully on uh, opposite lock. I have to say is uh, always very, very pleasing, but is often not the quickest way to drive a racing car because that was just uh, from the off and you can just see the uh, marbles that have been chucked up off the uh, racing line there from uh, previous racing today so restart behind the safety car whether the safety car stays out for one or two laps will be determined when the lights go out on top of the uh, safety car so really is bucketing down now isn't it yeah right now it's really heavy rain hitting the track and yeah we'll have a whole of a nice seven minutes race it's not going to be many racing laps, is there? No, I guess maybe four or five. And with these conditions, we've already seen that can be that we do one lap and then again a safety car. Yes. A, a crash. And also, the point is with this kind of spray, as soon as you are, it doesn't matter if you are P3 or P5 or P11, you don't see anything. It's like driving completely blind. And this is something that, you know, as a race fan, I... <laughs> you know, perhaps don't appreciate enough. And that is, unless you're the lead car, unless you're Fenestras, who of course is going to be unaffected by spray because he's got no cars ahead of him. As you say, if you're P2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you've got all that accumulated spray being chucked into your visor. And, you know, do you find yourself having to almost come out of the uh, slipstream of the car ahead just so that you can see where you're going? Yeah, it's, it's a really... Uh, scary and, and, and difficult situation for the drivers because they sometimes need to guess where they are. Yeah. They just need to look where is the wide line, either the right hand side or the left hand side, and, and guess where you are. And when you are coming into a corner in the GT racing, it's a little bit easier because when the car breaks, it's like a normal road car. You see the red light going on, and yes. then you see someone is breaking in front of me. But single seater, sometimes you don't have, you only have this flashing red light. But that doesn't mean you are actually breaking. It's just a no, warning. No, that's just a rain line. This is it? a rain line. Mm. It's just a flashing red light that says uh, there is a car in there. Well, the lights are off atop the safety car, so we're going to go for it. Um, at the end of this lap with the safety car, we're on six minutes now. We're not going to get many racing laps. There's confirmation on screen for you. Safety car comes in this lap as this uh, Formula Renault 2-litre Northern European Cup race will resume. Fenestras is leading from Lando Norris, who is uh, P2. The championship chaser, Max De Ferni, is uh, P3. And by the time they get to the timing line, it's going to be about five minutes of racing time left. So Fenestras will give it a footfall, and it's going to be down to Lando Norris and Max Defoni to almost anticipate when he's going to go for it, isn't it? 
Yeah, I guess it will go. We launch the race now. Now it does. Now it's full throttle and. But we need to remember a car can't overtake till crossing the actual start finish line. So now they can start overtaking themselves. Already a big battle going on for P4 and uh, P5 with uh, Robert Schwartzman in that mix. And Robert Schwartzman, very, very feisty young racer, trying to make his way up uh, the order. So there you can see exactly what I was saying as Lando Norris dives out of the uh, uh, wheel tracks of Fenestras ahead just so that he can try and see where he's going. And uh, Lando Norris then right alongside Fenestras then, but Fenestras have got more momentum. It's the start of the uh, Parabolica and they're going to head up to the uh, pinch point now, which is, which is the uh, hairpin here at uh, Hockenheim. And uh, just look at the spray that's being uh, chucked up by those cars. So Max Deforni then in uh, P3 is closer to Lando Norris than Norris is to Fenestras, who is leading the race. So he closes in a bit more, takes a very tight line through there, but I think Lando Norris has got enough momentum to maintain that P2 position. And of course, what he'll be thinking about as we get a uh, car turned around there, that's the number 77 car. And I think that's uh, Lawrence Hoare who has uh, gone around. Indeed so, lovely livery on that car. And now on the grass before rejoining and uh, just add some uh, grass to the um, already uh, fairly slippery track surface as well but does manage to return and was just pushed into that little uh, pirouette, if you like. So there is P1, uh, P2, and uh, then P3. Here we can see it again. Just a bit of contact there, wasn't there? And, uh, you know, in these conditions, there's not going to be much resistance to the car actually spinning around, is there? No, it's really easy to... As soon as you get a little bit top from, from behind, you just... Uh turn around and it's not much you can do. One of the end plates has broken on the uh, front wing of the car, but now this is a different incident where the... It's uh, the same, same car, but... It's the same car, but it's a different place, yeah, yeah. isn't it? And it's now beached in the gravel there, and... I guess many may, may be turning into the corner without the end plate. The, these, those cars without aero are, again, like if you were driving in ice, so maybe with a broken end plate, just miss the apex and run wide and went into the gravel. Hutchison with uh, problems as well. He's rejoining now, and well, yeah, completely look. That's the uh, Hutchison car, rather than the uh, number 77 car that we saw of uh, Lawrence Hoare, which is uh, once again uh, we saw beached into the gravel with uh, no getting out of that. Two and a half minutes remaining on the clock for this uh, Formula Renault 2 litre Northern European Cup race. Uh, where the 1, 2, 3 remain as they were, but uh, Schwartzman is up to uh, P4, having got past the uh, car of uh, Marecki. So uh, Schwartzman, as they're going nearly four abreast into the hairpin, this could all end in tears, but remarkably, they all go through, and it was the one right at the back of the pack who took advantage of that and uh, got almost two, three places at the same time. Yeah, use the, use the outside, stop the car, rotate it, and then you use, you went the earliest on the power, and and he managed to pass all four cars. It's a nice, nice moving. So up the inside there goes the... Uh, we get in again a red flag. Uh, no race is over. No restart. That's it. The race is done. Well, that's um, a real shame because weather conditions and clearly uh, track conditions are such that uh, they've decided that, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's quit while we're ahead. Uh, so it's going to be uh, Fenestras, Norris, Deforni that we see on the uh, podium. Uh, no restart, red flag. And I uh, feel a little bit sorry, if I may, for Robert Schwartzman, who was making yeah. good progress. And I think perhaps even with the little time we'd got, might have been able to challenge Deforni for the final podium place. But another two races to come tomorrow. And uh, hopefully he'll get uh, his uh, chance to uh, show his uh, prowess then. So the uh, number 14 car that we uh, saw there of uh, Will Palmer, the uh, British driver and the cars all into the uh, pit lane then. Then they need to drive to their respective boxes, maybe till the end of the, of the pit lane and then they will have to... Frustrating would it be, Alex Torrell, as a racing driver, to have gone out there and done nothing more than a couple of parade laps, really? Yeah, it's 
three is, is always really frustrating and, and really, except if you are P1. Of course. If you are P1, <laughs> you just want everything to end up as soon as possible, so you get yeah. your your win and you go you go happy home. So no, but it's it's always really, and also for the spectators to to see only four laps races is, is not is not what 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 they deserve. But it's racing and and also safety. It's over everything. So. It's really important. So if the race director says it's not safe to keep driving, then uh, he has always the responsibility of, of all the drivers. And if every kind of the decision he takes towards this is always the right one. Sasha Fenestras takes the win from Lando Norris. Max Tafoni P3. Then it's Marecki P4. Robert Schwartzman P5. Vartanian then takes P6 with Falcaro P7. And James Allen then in P8. It's an awful position that the uh, race director is in because you're absolutely right. There's the rest of the order. Bruno Baptista and uh, Enrique Chavez uh, rounding out the top 10 with Dorian Boccalacci just outside the top 10, P11. Um, because the race director has got to make that decision based on the, the judgment that, that, that he has, uh, based on all the information that is available to him. The weather conditions are not improving. Uh, the cars are skidding all over the place. And we all love, you know, the reason we do this job is because we love motor racing. We love to see guys like you out there racing. But what we don't want to see is any of you in more danger than is uh, than is uh, preventable uh, so yeah um, clearly it would be frustrating if you're particularly if you're somebody like uh, Robert Schwartzman um, or indeed uh, the uh, number 96 car of Marecki but you know what uh, it's going to be uh, Fenestras, Norris and Defoni we see on the podium here come uh, just a few highlights uh, to music and it will only be a few So a short edit then of uh, uh, just a few highlights that we can bring you from the uh, Formula Renault 2 litre Northern European Cup race one, which was uh, really, really rather shortened by dint of the weather and the race director deciding that uh, actually he was going to cut the race short due to uh, various incidents. going to be no restart of the race. So uh, the top three will be heading to the uh, podium in due course. So weather conditions are playing their part. The irony is, looking from our uh, commentary booth window, it looks like it's, uh, well, maybe it hasn't stopped raining, but it's certainly eased in comparison to uh, what we had, which uh, caused the, all the cars to be uh, brought back to the grid boxes and have the uh, slick weather tyres replaced by uh, wet weather tyres. But uh, nonetheless, that's uh, what has happened. So we're, we're standing by for the uh, podium as it is. And uh, we have... Uh, two Formula Renault two litre Northern European uh, races to come tomorrow, which uh, over the uh, full 25 minute race duration, hopefully will be uh, a little uh, busier than the uh, race that we have uh, seen today. I'm actually not, not sure Dave, but I think there is some kind of rule that you have you need to have at least 50% of the race to get a podium or something. Well, I was then going to ask that question because, you know, in in some championships, it gets reduced to half points depending upon the duration of the yes, race. Yes, that's right. Um, and whilst I've never heard what you've said with regards to that you can't have a podium, um, there is, you're quite right to point out from our commentary position, absolutely not one person on the podium at all preparing it so perhaps we are not going to have a podium and perhaps actually no points will be awarded for that race because we did so few laps maybe maybe you're right i'm, I'm not sure it depends a little bit on every championship regulations but they all have different ones don't they yeah but uh, there is some kind of rule that uh, you need to have a minimum uh, amount of laps to to set the race as a, as a valid result for, for championship points. And 
therefore a podium. And I'm beginning to wonder whether perhaps they will uh, choose to rerun that race in the schedule tomorrow, but it will be really difficult to do it because it's such a tight schedule. Um, but I, I don't know the answer. We, we do not sit in the race control room, so we do not know the answer to that question. All we do know is that uh, we have had a uh, race where on track at least, and it was only on track, it was uh, Fenestras that... Uh, that uh, I was going to say take the check of flag. Well, of course he didn't because the race was stopped. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. OK, well, obviously we'll uh, find out more information and uh, we'll bring that information to you when we can, when it comes per, uh, back to the Formula Renault 2 litre Northern European Cup races uh, tomorrow. Uh, but for now, the uh, race was halted. The race was stopped. And uh, yes, that's the way it is. And you're looking at the uh, very damp Hockenheim track at the moment. So, situation there. Interestingly, um, there is another race still to come, which is the uh, Turmwagen Trophy Race 1. And it uh, looks like the track is being prepared for it. So, and, and again, this goes back to what I was saying, Alex, about it being such a tight schedule. Uh, that there's no sort of wiggle room in the schedule to... Uh, uh, to and that, you know, that may have played into the race steward's uh, mind as well with regards to when he chose to red flag the race. Because ultimately, um, there is, uh, you know, there's only so much time available to him. There are noise curfews here as well. So, um, you know, perhaps that played a part in terms of the, the decision that he made. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But uh, we'll find out more. And uh, as soon as we know, uh, then we will bring that to you when it comes to uh, the uh, two uh, Formula Renault two-litre races that we should have tomorrow. Well, I'm sure we will have tomorrow, whether it's a, it's a question of whether it will be two races or three races. I think that's the only question. But I think you're absolutely right, um, Alex Turrell. We ain't going to get a podium because with only uh, just a few laps completed, as far as they're concerned, the race hasn't, uh, the race hasn't been run which will make it even more pivotal when it comes to the championship tomorrow, of course. Of course, you're you are absolutely right. Maybe maybe they can reschedule a race being in the morning, really early in the morning, that happens sometimes. But like you said, it's the, 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 it's the schedule is so tight that it's really hard to really put a, a race in between, a, an unscheduled race in between. Yes, you're absolutely right. That's going to be really difficult to do. So there you can see the uh, pit lane. Well, there we have it. We don't think we're going to have a podium. Uh, so uh, please join us tomorrow for Formula Renault uh, 2 litre Northern European when we will be back on track. We should have at least uh, two races, we think. Maybe it'll be three. Who knows? Um, from me, thank you very much. Alex Torrell, it's been a privilege and a pleasure to have you alongside us in comms and uh, look forward to hearing your voice once again very soon. You're, thank you very much, Dave. You're welcome. And it will be always a pleasure to come back and join you and comment for the people some nice motorsport. Well, we like seeing you out there winning races, but having you here is a bonus as well. So uh, that, from us, that's it for now. Bye-bye.